Hello YouTube, this is Brendan with QZAC Prep, and what I have is another video to help you prepare for the SAT or the ACT. Uh, what I've got for you today is a video on circle equations and how you can produce circle equations given certain points. Uh, these points might include the center of the circle, uh, part of the center of the circle, any point on the edge of the circle, or perhaps the radius. So just any point that is needed to help you figure out what a circle is. Now the quick tip for this video is make sure you stick to the circle equation when you're solving these types of problems. Uh, while drawing a graph may be helpful, you find that on the SAT and the ACT in this section in particular, uh, it's really not necessary and tends to just consume your time, uh, which as you know is very valuable in a time-based test. So definitely stick to the equation up at the top here. All right, so let's do a couple of example problems. Let's kind of dive right into it. So the first example problem that we have is to figure out the equation of a circle with a radius of five. So I'm just gonna make a quick note right here that r is equal to five. The center passes through the line y equals four. That means that our k value is gonna be four. And x would equal one and y would equal seven. Uh, because x and y represent points on the edge of the circle, 1 comma 7, x comma y, x equals 1, y equals 7. So then what we want to do is we want to take all of these points and we want to put them into the equation that is shown up at the top here. So what we would do is we would say 1 minus h squared plus 7 minus 4 squared is equal to 25 r squared. Now as we go through this, uh, we're just going to start simplifying wherever we can. Uh, 7 minus 4 is just 3 squared will give us 9. It's going to be equal to 25. We can go ahead and subtract 9 from both sides. And then we have a couple of options as to how we can simplify it from here. Uh, we could choose to foil out 1 minus h squared. Uh, when we foil it out, we would create a quadratic equation, bring everything to the same side, set it equal to zero. Uh, I prefer not to do that. I think that's a little bit tedious. Uh, rather, what I think is a better way is just to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. And when you do this, just recall that taking the square root of something, you have to set it equal to both the positive value as well as the negative value. So when we do that, we end up with 1 minus h is equal to 4. And also, 1 minus h is equal to negative 4. Now, we can go ahead and solve both of these. Uh, I'm going to kind of skip that step. I think you probably would know how to do that if you're watching this video. Um, what we would find for this left one is h is equal to negative 3. And for this right one, we would find that h is equal to 5. Once we have that information, we go ahead and we plug it up into this circle equation at the top. So we either have the circle where x plus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared is equal to 25, or we have the circle where x minus 5 squared plus y minus 4 squared is equal to 25. And either would be acceptable answers. On the SAT, uh, most likely this is going to be a multiple choice question, and you would only see one of these two answers present themselves. You would just have to know how to pick it. Uh, they might tell you something like the center, uh, the x-coordinate of the center is greater than zero, or it's less than zero to help you eliminate which of these two equations it might be. Uh, but generally, only one of the two answers is going to be present. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at sample problem two here. Uh, so we have a circle with a diameter of 20. Diameter of 20 simply means a radius is 10. Passing through the point 2 comma 5 means that x is 2 and y is equal to 5. And the x-coordinate of the center of the circle is 8. So that tells us that h is equal to 8. Once again, we're just going to go ahead and plug this into the equation at the top. So we would have 2 minus 8 squared plus 5 minus k squared is equal to r squared. Uh, 2 minus 8 uh, is negative 6. When I square that, I would end up with 36. 
again, 5 minus k squared is equal to 100. Subtract 36 over to the other side. So we would then end up with 5 minus k squared is equal to 64. I'm going to use the same technique I did last time, where I take the square root of both sides. And I end up with 5 minus k is equal to positive 8, as well as 5 minus k is equal to negative 8. Solving both of these equations for k, I end up with k equals 13 in this case. And in this case over here, I would end up with k is equal to negative 3. Thus, we end up with two equations. Uh, we have the case where we have x minus 8 squared plus y plus 3 squared is equal to 100. Or we have the case where x minus 8 squared plus y minus 13 squared is equal to 100. Again, either one of these are acceptable answer choices. Um, that's basically all you need. Uh, that's what you need to know about that. Uh, for the last one, slightly different. We're not given the radius in this case, but I actually find some ones a little bit easier to solve. Uh, so the center of the circle is 1, 7. So that means x is negative 1 and y is 7. Uh, whoops. That's not right. Uh, because it's the center of the circle, we know h is negative 1 and we know k is equal to 7. If it passes to the point 5 comma 15, we know x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 15. So again, plug it into our equation, we would end up with 5 minus negative 1 squared plus 15 minus 7 squared is equal to r squared. Uh, so this would be 6 squared plus 8 squared equals r squared, and ends up giving us 36 plus 64, so 100 is equal to r squared. Now, I could choose to solve this for r, but that actually serves no purpose, uh, because in our final equation, we put r squared on the right side. So this becomes x plus 1 squared plus y minus 7 squared is equal to 100. And this kind of gives me an opportunity to make a quick note. Um, on a lot of these standardized tests, you don't always have to go all the way in solving for x or in solving for r or in solving for y. Uh, if the question's asking you to find the value of r squared, you can stop there. If the question's asking you to find the value of 4x cubed, you can usually stop there if it appears somewhere in the equation. So it's just an important note. Remember that you don't always have to solve all the way to the final variable. You can solve for grouping of variables, uh, function around a variable, a lot of different things can be solved for. So thanks for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. Uh, as always, feel free to like and subscribe to my channel.